Oh, for the love of f this has to stop. Sponsored by Ting. Look, there have just always been iPhone leaks, even since before there was an iPhone. There were leaks about it being an iPod with a literal rotary dial on it. And then someone left an iPhone 4 in a bar, and then someone pulled an iPhone XS image off of a server. There have just always been leaks. But staying on brand to the 2020 dumpster fire of a year, we just have a dumpster fire of leaks this year. Every kid with an anonymous Twitter account looking for clout has decided that cryptocurrency is the past and iPhone leaks is the future. And they're just gonna spew out an endless amount of seemingly random factoids in the hope that someone's gonna pick up on it. And embarrassingly, people are. Major tech media sites are blogging this stuff no matter how zero the track record, no matter how cockamamie the rumor, and that just encourages more and more of them. And I get in 2020, everyone needs clicks just to survive, but I think at a certain point, we have to realize that we're feeding a toxic leak culture and just cut it out, or at least do the really, really important job of separating the noise from the signal for everyone trying to make sense of what's gonna happen this fall. And because you're not, I'm now the idiot left to try and tier list all this stuff, like I'm Tierzu, like I'm Charlie with Raid Boss Karens or something. But screw it, that's my job. So let's do this. Analytics tell me that 70% of you watching this video right now haven't hit the subscribe bell or button yet. And with all the big fall releases about to start raining down on us, you're gonna wanna go ahead and do that now. Cool? Cool. First up, 120 Hertz, which is just gonna go down in infamy as the absolute worst, will they, won't they, is it, isn't car wreck of a rumor leak for 2020. So the currently controversial John Prosser, who is re-ranked by Apple Track down from 77.8 to 67.6, over 27 rumors, and that drops him down from B to C tier right now, based on some bad calls earlier in the month. He's fighting to get his way back to the top with a whole new set of rumors. Unfortunately, one of those about the damn refresh rate again, saying 120 Hertz code name D6X didn't make it into production. Now you can give up, which sent every tech nerd like me just tumbling into new states of depression while simultaneously at least trying to remind myself that I only represent about 5% of the market at most. Then the very next day, Samsung leaker Ice Universe, who isn't ranked by Apple Track because he's a Samsung leaker, so I'm gonna invent a new tier, like X tier for him for now, came out and said, the iPhone 12 Pro Max 120 Hertz still has a silver lining, which needs to be confirmed by the press conference. There are two conflicting sources within Apple. Maybe the bad news you heard comes from the production line, which doesn't really mean much. Even though Ice Universe is a cat, it's not Schrodinger's cat. It's not locked in some quantum state like Doctor Who's Weeping Angels, like sorry, so sorry, Amy Pond style. Because surely if the iPhone 12s have gone into production, this has been decided. And if it's a hardware feature, it was decided months ago. And even the echoes of those decisions should have been well processed, just totally chewed up by the rumor mill by now. But the sort of rationale for why it's still a debate is that Apple is implementing the hardware. The panels that they are using are capable of 120 Hertz, but they're gonna choose to to either implement it or not implement it in software based upon things like battery performance, color management performance, all of those things, which means they don't have to decide until they put the software onto the device at the factory. And the debate around this is that the current generation of panels Apple supposedly using are similar to the Galaxy S20, which doesn't have the technology in it to do the adaptive or dynamic refresh rate that Apple really wants to do, and that they need panels like the ones in the Galaxy Note 20, which have LTPO, and that's sort of an OLED version of the technology they use in the LCD panels on the iPad Pro that allow for ProMotion, but those panels are not available enough in sufficient quantity to serve an iPhone scale deployment, which is hundreds of thousands of devices. And it's also important to remember that Apple doesn't ship chipsets, they ship feature sets, and they don't ship specs, they ship uh, experiences. And when you look at things like NFC, Apple never just put an NFC chip in an iPhone and said, here, figure out cool things to do with it. 
they prototyped it in several iPhones and ultimately didn't ship it until they had Apple Pay. And then they shipped Apple Pay, not NFC. It just so happened that Apple Pay used NFC. And the same thing is true with screen sizes. They prototyped big screens for years before they shipped the iPhone 6 and OLED screens for years before they shipped the iPhone 10. They want a specific experience from this technology. And 120 Hertz panel by itself is just tech. It's just a spec. And Apple never shipped that for the iPad. They shipped promotion, which is a feature, an experience that sure can ramp up to 120 Hertz for the buttery smooth scrolling and for gaming, for games that support it and for extra low latency on the Apple Pencil, but can also ramp down to 48 Hertz to show Hollywood movies at 24 frames per second, like I keep saying, the way that nature and Hollywood intended, or all the way down to 24 hertz to try to reclaim some of the battery that gets spent at the higher refresh rates. As far as I know, Apple doesn't wanna deliver 120 hertz, they wanna deliver promotion. And if the current generation of panels don't support it, they won't do it. And if the next generation of panels do support it, then they'll do it with those next generation panels. And it's just, it's critical to keep reminding ourselves that no matter how much we as nerds personally want it, it is gonna have almost no effect at all on the sales of Apple's next iPhone. Next up, another one of our perennial favorites, LiDAR, this time from Everything Apple Pro, who isn't ranked individually by Apple Track because previously most of his rumors came from Max Weinbach. But this time around, it is non-Max Weinbach rumors. It's actually what everything Apple Pro claims to be the final chassis design for a 6.1 inch iPhone 12 Pro. And he says this seems to confirm the 6.1 inch model of the iPhone Pro will get LiDAR as well. And I think this is great because there have been rumors that were sort of conflicted about this in the past as to whether both Pro models would be getting LiDAR or just the Pro Max model would be getting LiDAR. And that's something Apple did in the past with optical image stabilization and dual camera systems, where if you wanted the better, the better camera, you had to get the bigger phone. And they went away from that with the 10s and 10s Max and the 11 Pro and Pro Max. And I hope they stick with that because then you just, you choose your screen size. You don't have to choose your screen size based on your camera. And I think some people are still wondering specifically what LiDAR will do in an iPhone because they look at it in the iPad as maybe sort of a developer only feature or a, a fringe AR feature. And there've been rumors for years about an AR camera, uh, like a next generation AR camera on the iPhone and camera app because right now a lot of the fun AR effects are inside messages and inside FaceTime and not in the camera app at all. And I think Apple's been waiting until the back camera can do more of the same things that the front camera, the true depth camera can do, sort of making a true depth camera for the back where the, the density of the dot matrix won't be as high as it is on the front, but it'll be able to project much further out into a room or into outside. And there's a lot of things they can do with that. For example, get much better depth data, and that can be used for much better autofocus. It can be used for things like portrait mode in lower light situations. It can be used maybe for portrait mode in video situations, which is something we've seen from other vendors sort of hit and miss, but maybe Apple could deliver with this technology. So in general, I think, yeah, there'll be sort of the more next generation AR stuff getting ready for the Apple glasses phase of it. But I also think it'll just create much better, more solid camera performance for the pro models in general. Now we have Digitimes who's ranked 61% by Apple track over 59 rumors, which puts them clearly in the D tier is claiming that the new iPhone lineup may arrive in two stages, which nothing new there. But where they get weird is by saying the two 6.1 inch models will come first followed by the 6.7 and 5.4 inch devices afterwards, which means we'll get one regular, one pro, and then another regular, another pro. And this might make sense because the two 6.1 inch models are sizes that Apple has made before, but because the 5.4 inch model, which is smaller even than an iPhone SE and sort of the dream device everyone who really loves small iPhones has been waiting for, could take extra tooling or extra time to tool up. And same with the 6.7 inch model, which is the bigger iPhone and you know maybe to fit in the millimeter wave radio, but maybe also because some people really are using their phones as primary computing devices and just can't get big enough phones, maybe that's also taking longer to ramp up on the lines as well. 
But previously we heard rumors that it was gonna be more like 2017, where the regular iPhone 8 came first and then the higher end iPhone 10 came later. But then we heard other rumors saying, no, it's gonna be more like 2018, where the higher end iPhone 10s came first, followed by the more mid-range iPhone XR. And I think it's just really important to remember that Apple itself, Luca Maestri, their chief financial officer, said that iPhones in general are coming a few weeks late this year, which means late September, early October at best. And if we've seen these sorts of staggered releases in fairly normal times, like 2017 and 2018, there is just no telling what we'll see in this rancid trash fire of uh, 2020. So we're just gonna have to wait and see. But let me know which one you're waiting on and plan to get in the comments below. And to save some money when you get it, especially if you're at work or at home or just working from home right now with tons of Wi-Fi around you, there's simply no need to pay any extra money for any more data than you're actually using. Same for talk, same for text, not with Ting. Ting offers coverage on Verizon and T-Mobile. So no matter where you are or where you go, you'll have more service options in more places. And it works with almost any phone, the iPhone for sure, the Google Pixel, the Samsung Galaxy, yeah, both the slabs and the folds, pretty much anything you can put a SIM card into. The average Ting bill is just $23 a month and with no contracts, no commitments. And since you're watching this video, you can get a $25 service credit to try them out. Bring your own phone. Bring your own number if you want to. Just go to reneeritchie.ting.com and see how much you can save and get $25 off. Seriously, go to reneeritchie.ting.com or click the link in the description and start saving with Ting. And clicking on that link really helps out this channel. To learn more about the iPhone 12, just everything coming this fall, click on the playlist above. I'm gonna go through all the rumors, all the specs, everything you can expect. So just click on that link and I'll see you next video.